Hey everybody, it's Mr. MathBlog. This lesson is a, a chapter test review on whole numbers and decimals. We're going to be multiplying, adding, subtracting, and dividing. And don't forget all your lessons can be found at MrMathBlog.com. Let's go ahead and get started here. So here's some vocabulary here. We're going to choose the best term uh, from this box to complete the sentence. Okay, so here's the first one. Now, the largest number that can be, uh, that is a common factor, here's the key word here, a common factor of two or more other numbers is the, well, here it's the greatest common factor, okay? It's the largest number that can be uh, multiple, or not multiples, factors of each of the numbers right there. So that one's greatest common factor right there, okay? So an example of 20, which equals um, uh, 2 times 2 times 5, well, this is prime factorization. So an example of prime factorization is 20 equals 2 times 2 times 5, okay? And so the other one's right here, you guys. But the, the smallest number other than 0, that is a common multiple. Again, the key word is multiple. And smallest also, you guys. Smallest multiple would be least common multiple, okay? So common right here. So the common multiple of two or more numbers, the smallest one is going to be the least common multiple right there, okay? All right, so let's speak in a least common multiple. Let's find the least common multiple of these numbers. So between 4 and 16, we'll do a few ways here that we learn. So one way is to... Uh, make a list of the first non-zero multiples. Now non-zero just means it's not zero because zero is a multiple of every number. So 4 times 1, 4 times 2, 4 times 3, 4 times 4, and so on. Although I did 4 times 5. I can keep going right here and then do 16 times 1, 16 times 2, 16 times 3. Here's 16 times 3. You just keep adding 16, that'll give you the next 16 right there. So the smallest common one that they have is this one right here. So the LCM is going to be 16 right there, okay? Another way is to do the prime factorization and then use uh, Venn diagrams, okay? So the prime factors of 12 will go in this circle, including this little region right here. The prime factorization of 8 will go in this circle, including this region. And in this region, we put the common numbers right there. So here are the factors of 12. So 2 times 6, and then 6 breaks down to 2 times 3. And 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. So they both have a couple of 2s. So we'll put the couple of 2s in here, and we'll put the leftovers in the other spots right there. Okay, and the trick on the LCM is to take all of these numbers and multiply them together. So it's the product of all those numbers, so we get 24 on that. Okay, and then another way, you guys, is is to look at the biggest number right here. The biggest number is 15. If it's a multiple of the smaller numbers, then that's going to be the least common multiple. So since 15 is a multiple of 3 and 5, in fact, it's 3 times 5, then the LCM is 15. All right, let's do the GCF, the greatest common factor. Okay, so, so factors are just numbers that you multiply together to get to that number. So what times what equals 16? And there's all kinds of factors of 16. So one way is to just list all the factors of 16 and then find the greatest common factor. So here's factors of 16. 1 goes into 16, 2 does, 4 does, 8 does, and 16 does. Here's all the factors of 20. And then look for the one that they, they both have 1's in common. They both have 2's in common. But the biggest one, the greatest one, is that 4. The GCF is 4. Okay, another way is to use Venn diagrams. So we'll do that with this one. So we'll do the prime factorization of 48 over here, and this one's going to be 56. Sorry, tongue, tongue twister right there. So there's 48 and 56 right here, and they both share two, three twos in common right there. Then the GCF is just the product of the common ones right there. So 2 times 2 times 2 will give us... 8 for the GCF, okay? All right, for this one here, we'll do it both ways, 60 and 72. And you don't have to do it both ways, I'm guessing, you guys. So here's one way is to list all the factors of 60. There's a lot of them. These are all the numbers that go into 60. Again, there's a lot of them that go into 72, and the greatest one is that 12 right there. Or you can do uh, the prime factorization again, and then do um, uh, Venn diagram right there, and they both share 2 times 2 times 3, and if you multiply those, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, okay? All right, so let's estimate, then find the sum or difference, okay? So we'll go ahead and estimate all of these, okay? This rounds to 8, this does to 3, and this does to 23. So 8 plus 3 is 11, 11 plus 23 is 34. So this is going to get us something close to 34. 
Here I did 500 minus 100, so we should get something close to 400. Here, 54 plus 1 plus 11. Okay, we should get something close to 66. All right, so on this one here, we'll go ahead and line up the decimals. When we're adding or subtracting, we just line up the decimals and then carry it straight down and then just add. Okay, 6 plus 2 is 8. 8 plus 8 is 16, so we'll carry the 1. Put the 6 down there, okay? I think I did all of it right there, okay? So we get 33.6 on this one. Okay, on this one, we're going to have to do lots of borrowing. Let's first put a 0 right there, okay? And then um, we got to borrow. We can't do 0 minus 7, so we borrow from the 5 and make it a 4. And then change this to a 10. Whoops, I forgot to change that to a 10. So 10 minus 7 is 3. And then 4 minus uh, 0 is 4. Okay, 8 minus 8 is 0. Don't forget, bring the decimals straight down. And then we can't do 0 minus 3, so we borrowed from the 2, made it a 1, and then uh, that made this a 10. 10 minus 3 is 7. Okay, well, this was 1, so we can't uh, do 1 minus 9, so we borrowed again from this 5, made it a 4, so this became 11. 11 minus 9 is 2, and then finally... Uh, 4 minus 0. Okay, so 427.043. Okay, here we just bring that decimal straight down and add. I don't even think there's any carrying over on that one. So piece of cake. All right, so let's do that with uh, multiplying and dividing. Okay, so here let's estimate here. So this is close to 375. This is close to 1. So it's going to give us something close to 375. Okay. Here, if we did uh, 3.276, now this is kind of hard to do this in your head, you guys, because of this decimal right there. So I rounded that to 3.2, because 4 goes into 32 eight times. So, but, so be careful. So 4 goes into 3 zero times. 4 goes into 2, or 32, I'm sorry, 40. 40 goes into 32 zero times. Finally, you guys, 40 goes into 320 eight times, but don't forget the zeros right there. So this one's going to be close to 0 0.08 right here, okay? And then this one, uh, round that to 9, round this to, I guess, 630, and then 9 times 7 is 63, so 9 times 70 is 630. So we'll get something close to 70 on this one, okay? Just some good estimating skills. All right, so on this one, just go ahead and multiply this times this, like whole numbers right there. And then two decimal, there's one decimal here, there's one decimal here, so that means move this one over two places, so 337.59. All right, so this one here, let's go ahead and divide this guy right here. So uh, let's carry the decimal straight up right there. 42 goes into this zero times, and it goes into 32 zero times. And then since uh, 40 times uh, 8 is 320 right there, 42 times 7 is 294, so here we get 336, that's too big right there, so let's do 7, so we'll write 294 right there and put a 7 right there, here we go, and then we'll subtract, okay, so you'll see I'm going to start making a lot of work down here, does your teacher make you show work? Well, I do in my classes right there, so 327 minus 294 is 33, there's a 33, and then carry this 6 down, we already know that 42 times 8 is 336, so this is going to be uh, 0.078, okay? All right, so here, remember we got to move that decimal over one place, so that means we're going to move this over one place right there. We multiply both numbers by 10, all right? And then, um, and then we'll go ahead and see uh, 92, so 92 times 6 is, is 552. Well, that's enough right there, so we're going to put a a 6 right above the 619 right there. Okay, and then we'll subtract and then bring down the 1. Okay, and then um, since this is 6 right here, 552, let's try uh, 7 right there. So 92 times 7 is 644. And then we'll subtract. Okay, and then when we subtract, I did that over here, we get 27. So 27, slide down the 6. And then 92... Uh, 92 times 3 gets us 276, so the answer is 67.3. Don't forget about the decimal. It goes straight up after after it gets moved over that one time. All right, here's some multiple choice. So buns and packages uh, come in packages of 24. Hot dogs come in packages of 18. We want a hot dog for each bun. 
What is the least number of buns and hot dogs we can buy so that nothing is left over? Okay, this one's a least common multiple problem right here. So um, I'm going to do Venn diagrams right here. Here's factors of 24. Here's factors of 18. So the least common multiple is the product of all of these numbers. So we're going to multiply all those numbers together and we get 72. So there's going to be 72 buns and 72 hot dogs. Okay, all right, so here's another one. So Samuel is cutting three pieces of rope into equal sections to build a swing. The three pieces of rope measure 28 feet, 14 feet, and 42 feet. So if the pieces are as long as possible, what should each piece be cut into? All right, so this is a greatest common factor problem. So I'm going to show you uh, by factors of each number, factors of 28. One goes into 28, 2 does, 4 does, 7 does, 14 does, 28 does. Okay. Here's all the factors of 14. Here's all the factors of 42. So the greatest one that they have in common is this 14 right there. So choice C. Okay. All right. So an, a, an organism measures 65 millimeters in length in a photograph. If the photo has been enlarged by a factor of 100, what is the actual length of that organism? Okay. So um, if it's been enlarged, you guys, that means it's been multiplied by a factor of 100. So to undo this, we have to go backwards and divide by 100. And when we divide by 100, we just uh, move the decimal over two places to the left. So if there's no decimal, it's uh, assumed to be right there. So two places over there is uh, 0.65, so 0.65 millimeters. All right, so you can buy five tutoring sessions at B&B's test prep for the same price as you can buy four tutoring sessions at Kaplan's test prep. All right, who's cheaper, by the way? Is Kaplan or is B&B uh, cheaper? Well, if you can do five at B&B for the same price at four in Kaplan, B&B gives you a better deal, so it's cheaper. Anyways, if one tutoring session at B&B costs 1180 how much does one at Kaplan's cost? Okay, all right, remember, they cost the same at five for B&B and four for Kaplan. So let's take this one uh, uh, price right here, multiply it by five. That'll give us B and B's price at five right there, and so that's going to be the same price for four of Kaplan's. So to find one of Kaplan's, that's what it's asking, is we're going to take that fifty-nine dollars and divide it by four. So here we go. So four goes into five once, and then we subtract. So five minus four is one, and then we'll slide the nine down, and then uh, four goes into nineteen four times, and four times four is sixteen. So we'll subtract and bring the zero down, okay, and then uh, 4 goes into uh, 37 times, we get 28, and then one more subtraction, we get 20, and then finally we get 1475 for the price at Kaplan's right there, okay. All right, one more problem. So to estimate the quotient 99.3 divided by 52.4, Chucky uses compatible numbers. He used the compatible numbers 100 for this one and 5 for this one, and 100 divided by 5 is 20. Is his estimate reasonable? And then explain, well, I know 100 divided by 5 equals 20, but he rounded this number incorrectly. This should be 50 right here. So no, it's not uh, reasonable. So the compatible numbers for, for 52.4 is 50. So then he should have had 100 divided by 50, which is 2. So anything that's close to 2 should work. All right, you guys, I hope that makes sense. Take care.